Coming up, we're talking the World of Outlaws Late Model Series schedule, USAC Midgets at Bakersfield tonight, and more. Let's go. Today is Tuesday, November 16th, 2021. Welcome into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. Right off the top today, I wanted to mention that I launched Dirt Tracker Plus yesterday to the world. The full slate of advanced dirt racing analytics and tools is now available on the site with a subscription. For $4.99 a month or $49.99 a year, you get access to the Plus dashboard, which features several new tools, including a side-by-side -side driver comparison, average finish by track, winner average start per track, and a whole lot more. You'll also get to see some key data points visualized on that dashboard as well. There are also a ton of new added stat categories in the analytics section, like races with a positive plus minus, who's hot over the previous 10 races, and a new one called streakers shows drivers who are potentially on top 10 streaks. Plus stats in the analytics section are highlighted with the color blue if you're curious which ones are available for Plus members. So if you're a serious race fan, member of the media, work for a track or series, this will be a fantastic resource going forward. I use the same set of tools daily to put together these shows, and I'm kind of making this all available now to everyone else. For those of you who play fantasy racing or participate in some of the pools, things like the driver compare will help you set your lineups and uh, really dominate your competition there. And the beauty of this thing is you can cancel at any time and you don't need me to do that. You can jump on your billing profile page, hit the cancel button and you're all good to go. To see more information about what's available, head over to dirttracker.com and click plus in the navigation bar. You can also log in and register at dirttracker.com slash plus and keep an eye out over the next couple of days. I'm going to put together a full video kind of running you through the dashboard, the new tools and all the different new stats that are available, kind of explaining the whole thing as well. So if you're interested in Dirt Tracker Plus, pay attention for that video coming up. The World of Outlaws Late Model Series dropped their 2022 schedule about a week ago now, and I wanted to make sure we doubled back and talked about what's on tap. We already knew from back in October about the points fund increases and some of the Crown Jewel events coming up next year. Last week's announcement just filled in the rest of the gaps. Returning next year are regular favorites like Dirt Car Nationals, World Finals, the Prairie Dirt Classic at Fairbury, and the USA Nationals at Cedar Lake. We'll also get the usual spring weekend at Farmer City. Bristol is back on the schedule as well, and Peebly returns for the first time since 2018. World Finals at Charlotte uh, to close the season is an interesting one to highlight here, as it was announced at the event a few weeks ago that it will grow to a four-day affair in 2022, with qualifying now taking place on Wednesday, followed by three nights of racing instead of the two that it's been the last several years. Other additions for 2022 include a two-night show at Atomic Speedway in Ohio in April, another Pennsylvania date with a stop at Bloomsburg Fair on May 19th, Tri-City and the Dirt Oval at Route 66 kick off the June slate of races, plus there's a fall swing through Kansas that includes races at Humboldt and 81 Speedway. We've documented on this show the switch of the firecracker at Lernerville from Outlaw to Lucas Sanction for 2022, and the Outlaws went ahead and scheduled on top of that event with the 20000 to win weekend at Peebly with the Summer Nationals. So we know the championship payout, we know the crown jewels, and now we know the full schedule. The next question is who will race full-time for the title? Cal Hammer and Max Blair have both announced their intentions to run. We know Ricky Weiss is out. Brandon Shepard and the Rocket team are undecided as of this point. And there have also been rumblings of maybe Frank Heckenass Jr. coming back out full time. Just kind of have to wait and see over the coming weeks who goes where and how this thing kind of plays out. With all the money on the line, even if you see some guys drop off, I definitely think there will be some guys that jump on uh, to be able to grab some of this extra cash that's going to be available next season. To see the full World of Outlaws Late Model Series schedule, you can find that at worldofoutlaws.com. If you're in need of a dirt racing fix tonight, the USAC National Midgets are headed to Bakersfield Speedway to continue their West Coast swing. Justin Grant and Chris Windham split the wins at the Western World over the weekend, and the championship battle between Windham and Buddy Kofoid remains super tight with just 13 points between the two. Kofoid is the defending winner at Bakersfield, having outdueled Kyle Larson there last season, leading the final four laps en route to the win. Following tonight, the midget competitors will then head to Placerville for the three-night Hangtown 100 weekend. You'd think with 16 straight top 10 finishes that Kofoid has been doing enough to stay atop the standings, but Wyndham has just been really good since the middle of June. 
During Indiana Midget Week, Wyndham had a three-night stretch where he finished 12th at Circle City, 13th at Lincoln Park, and 20th at Gas City. In the 20 races since, Wyndham has six of his seven wins this year, 10 podium results, 16 top fives, and 19 top tens. His only stumble was a 21st place finish at the BC 39 at Indy. He leads the series in average finish over both the last five races and last 10 races. And that's how he's climbed back into the championship fight and taken the lead from Kofoid. For the year, Wyndham's average finish is 5.18, while Kofoid's is 5.21. Just three hundredths of a position on average separate them. That's pretty wild. If you can't be at Bakersfield tonight, watch all of the USAC races live on Flow Racing. The ASCS National Tour 4 360 Sprint Cars will have a new owner next season in Terry Maddox. They've got an increased points fund up to $200,000 with the champion taking fifty dollars And they'll also have a new format for their regular shows. The new nightly format is kind of a mixture of new and old, with group qualifying leading into heat races with a four-car invert, then heat races paying passing points. The top 16 in passing points will make the feature with a draw for a feature invert of up to three rows. The rest of the field will split into B mains with three cars transferring from each of two B mains or six cars from one B. It's not a big surprise to see a bit of a format change for the ASCS as they've kind of toyed with this some uh, in, in recent years, uh, some different setups here. Uh, they've done the, the all-star format and a few other things. You can also understand Maddox wanting to put his stamp on this series uh, right away. We're still waiting on the 2022 ASCS schedule to be released, but I'm guessing we'll see that pretty soon. For more information, visit ASCSRacing.com. In this slot on the show, I had originally planned to give you results from last night's action at Kern County out in California, but outside of Chance Crum winning the midget feature and Corey Eliason finishing third thanks to a PJ Peterson tweet, I can't find anything about what happened last night. They had midgets and non-wing 410s running, but the track hasn't updated their website or social media and I can't find results anywhere else. I think that's really, really lame. How are we nearly into 2022 and on a daily basis, we can't find results for some dirt races that are happening across the country? You want fans to spend money to come buy tickets, concessions, and your pay-per-view streams, but you can't provide timely updates on your race results? Absolutely, completely ridiculous. We've got to do better dirt racing. Uh, some series that can actually provide updates uh, is dirt racing of the virtual kind. The World of Outlaws... Um, the iRacing, excuse me, World of Outlaws World Championship got underway last night at Volusia Speedway Park. iRacing hosts series for pro iRacers across a ton of different cars, types, and series. And these races all pay money to win, and there's big cash on the line for the championship. If I remember correctly, the defending champion Alex Bergeron won $10,000 last season. Bergeron is actually a three-time series champion with the sprint cars, and he's up against a fresh crop of challengers this season. 17 drivers are back from the previous season with another 18 who raced their way into the field from the qualifying series. In last night's opener, Blake Majulis dominated the feature, leading every lap to take the victory over Bergeron. Majulis is actually a past champion of the Late Model Pro Series in iRacing. And if you might remember from last season, Hayden Cardwell was the serious challenger to Bergeron, and he's in the field again this season, but failed to make last night's feature. If you'd like to tune in, the races are streamed live on Dirt Vision and on YouTube every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. Dirt Vision's Chase Rodman is part of the announcing team, so you will hear a familiar voice. The series heads to Kokomo Speedway next week. There are two items on the streaming schedule today, both of which are happening on Flow Racing. The USAC National Midgets are headed to Bakersfield, like I just mentioned, and they have Flow 24-7. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. That's it for the show today. Hope you have a good Tuesday. If you have thoughts about the topics on today's show, please leave them in the comments below or tweet at me. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.